My name is Benedict Berninger and I'm a professor of developmental neurobiology at the Centre for Developmental Neurobiology at King's College London. I would like to tell you a little bit about my own biography. I was born and raised in Munich, Germany, and I was born into an artist family. My mother is a writer and director of theatre pieces, my, while my father was a painter. Both my parents created a home of intellectual endeavour, and many friends went in and out to discuss with my parents different topics of art, philosophy, but very importantly also science, because many friends were actually scientists, biologists and physicists and so on. And this inspired me very early on the wish to become a scientist myself. So at this time, of, of course, I was interested in, perhaps unsurprisingly, dinosaurs and animals, elephants and lions in particular. And so if you would have asked me what I would like to become when I was a grown-up, I would have perhaps answered um, a researcher of elephants in the wild. So whenever we went during a summer holiday on travel, visiting different countries and places, um, I forced my parents and my sister to go to the local zoo or to a museum where they would exhibit dinosaur bones. After primary school, I went to high school and there I fell in love with another topic that still fascinates me uh, nowadays, ancient languages. So I had the opportunity to learn something of Latin and ancient Greek. And while this may sound perhaps outlandish and particularly outlandish for a scientist, um, I, th I, I really appreciated and cherished learning these languages because they introduced me into topics such as the power of discourse and the power of argumentation. And I greatly um, profited and benefited from these classes during high school. But I was nonetheless um, decided that I would become an, a national scientist. And this was even further promoted by reading a book that really, I think, was a turning point in my life. Uh, when I was about 16 years old, I got hold of a book written by uh, Sir John Eccles, um, the, the great uh, neurophysiologist who actually discovered inhibitory synaptic transmission. And he had written a book which is a kind of introduction to neuroscience or the functioning of the brain. I think the English title is Facing Reality and I read it in the German translation, but it deeply inspired me uh, to learn more about how the brain works and um, inspired me uh, to become a neuroscientist. So as a consequence, I decided to study biology. Uh, I studied biology at the University of Munich. And very quickly, I tried to see what I could actually, uh, in par parallel, have some hands-on experience in research. And so I um, started to do an internship in the, in the Max Planck Institute for uh, Neurobiology in the laboratory of uh, Hans Tönen. Hans Tönen was one of the key figures of molecular neuroscience at that time. His laboratory had actually discovered one of the most important neurotrophic factors, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or short BDNF, which is still a, a protein and, and uh, that is um, a center stage player in many publications these days. And so in this atmosphere, I um, got even more inspired of doing research. So 
Um, one aspect that I really cherished of the lab of Hans was that it was a highly international place um, with people from all over the world joining the lab to do their PhD work and postdoc. And so after doing my diploma thesis in Hans, Hans's lab, I had also the, the fortune to continue there as a PhD student. And uh, I should add that I encountered there a um, colleague, a postdoc actually, who took care of me as a day-to-day -day supervisor. And uh, this guy was Naoyuki Nagaki, a postdoc from Japan. And this maybe underscores something of the, the great um, benefits of studying in a lab. Again, the international aspect, because now Yuki not only introduced me into science or the, or the technical aspects of doing cell biological research, but he also gave me something of his Japanese philosophy, which I um, really found very interesting and inspiring. So I think Laboratories are a great place to make uh, great friendships and encounters and to learn a lot of people from different cultures and origins. And uh, in discussion with Naoyuki, he also inspired me uh, to do a postdoc abroad. So he told me, why don't you go, for example, to a, to make a um, postdoc in the United States? And so I... Um, visited several laboratories uh, until I decided to go to join the laboratory of Mooming Poo, who at that time was at the University of California, San Diego. So Mooming was another extraordinary scientist uh, with whom I had the fortune, fortune to work. And again, this was an environment uh, which was quite international. Uh, I, for the first time, I really met lots of um, fellow colleagues from China, um, but also I, I met people from South America and other places, of course, uh, US American um, scientists. And again, this enriched my experience of uh, the international endeavor that science represents. I also learned a lot of things with Mo Ming directly, his um, interest or his his passion for um, this breakthrough discoveries and I learned also his heuristic principle of how to approach uh, science. Uh, he's a, he um, gives this advice and I think it's a very valid and valuable advice that when you try to identify a new topic on which to work you should really take a classical textbook and read this and then ask yourself the question whether some of the dogmas or long-held beliefs that you find in this textbook maybe would be worth to be retested. So if you challenge these classical concepts, perhaps you find that they are not true at all. And so you should try to reproduce some of the experiments, but with new techniques. And using these new techniques, if you can confirm a long-held belief or dogma, then this strengthens, of course, this dogma. But there's a good chance that you will actually find that this belief was wrong. And so then you would make a, a really important breakthrough discovery that provides a revision of a long-held belief. And I think a very important aspect in, in research is uh, not simply the accumulation of knowledge, but a constant disposition to put long-held beliefs uh, into doubt and to question them. And, and the same is with personal authority, of course. As a scientist, I think one of the key features that you have to develop is your ability to doubt uh, things that are told to you and question them. Not so much because 
um, as a general attitude, but as a, an insight in the fact that our science is man-made, and so there are um, many concepts and ideas that are not as solid as we uh, would like to have them. And so by questioning them, we often discover that, um, that they are wrong. So after a, a really um, very inspiring time in California, I returned to Germany, first to the institute where I had done my PhD, the Max Planck Institute of uh, Neurobiology. But then I joined the laboratory of another really outstanding scientist, Magdalena Goetz. Magdalena at that time had just discovered that essentially all neurons in the brain are derived from a cell type that until then was considered a support cell, the radioglia. As the name says, radioglia, um, these cells are uh, very similar to glial cells in the brain. And by that time they had been considered essentially as the scaffold for migrating neurons. But Magdalena was one of the first scientists who actually discovered that these cells divide and are the neural stem cells that give rise to all neurons. But Magdalena didn't stop there. Magdalena actually went the next step ahead asking, so why do these cells give rise to neurons, while other glial cells that we find in our other brains, for example, they don't give rise to neurons. And so what uh, this inspired, this idea inspired, was the um, notion that perhaps it would be possible to force glial cells in the brain to turn into neurons, something which we uh, refer to as lineage reprogramming, and which became the main topic of my research since my time with Magdalena and uh, in my own laboratory since now over 10 years. So after a really exciting period working again in Munich on lineage reprogramming of glia into neurons, I got a call to the um, University Medical Center in Mainz to join there as a professor for biochemistry and um, I started there to establish my own lab with all the challenges, challenges and difficulties that you have when you start your own lab. But again, with the wish also to have a, a laboratory that is international and uh, where people from any place in the world would join. And uh, I was very happy that I succeeded in, in actually doing this. And so in 2018, I eventually moved to London after I realized that the Center of Developmental Neurobiology is a fantastic place to be, both for the scientific quality you find there, as well as the international atmosphere that you can breathe there. So I like to, to finish my little summary of my own biography with, um, welcoming you to spend some time at our center and I hope that you enjoy it as much as I do and uh, wish you all the best.